So this is a welcome to digital coloring with our Alpha Zen Handlebet letter. Again, this is a made up word. You'll see at the front and back end, Alpha Bet with hand in the middle. That's because this is the letter that we created with patterns in it. And we're gonna color it now on the computer. So I'm gonna go into my Google Drive. This is linked in first periods class. I'm gonna find my letter and preview it. Then I'm gonna click on the download button. and download it to my desktop. It might automatically download to your downloads folder also. After that's finished downloading, I'm gonna close this window. And I'm gonna open up Klecky. This is an application that one of my students showed me a couple of weeks ago. And it's very well suited for this kind of work. I'm going to go to the file menu and import. It goes right to my downloads folder. So I'm going to click on here and select open. This is the original size of this file in pixels, 2550 by 3296 pixels. Since that's above the limit for Klecky, it's telling me that it's gonna download, or excuse me, upload to this size here, 1584 by 2048. Make sure to select as image instead of as layer. When it opens up, you can pinch it closed to see the full image. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale it down even further. So on the edit menu, I'm gonna click there and select resize. I'm gonna select the height and change this to a thousand pixels. And click okay. Nothing appears to have changed on this, but I assure you it is now smaller. It's taking up less space on the computer. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on layers. This shows me the name of the file. I'm gonna click on the plus to add a layer. Double click where it says layer two and change this to the word color. And click rename. I'm going to do that one more time. Double click here. And I'm going to call this layer ink and click rename. Think of layers as transparent pieces of paper or transparent sheets of, of no color until you start inking on it and coloring on it. I'm going to change the blending mode on both of these to darken for now. And then again, I'm gonna zoom in by pinching open. Zoom into this picture. With the color layer selected, I'm gonna click on the paintbrush and choose a color. And I'm gonna click the paintbrush again and up the size a little bit. You can see that that's how big this paintbrush is now. And when I start clicking and dragging, I'm using a mouse on this, but you can use your finger or you can use a stylus. And we're gonna be using a stylus, which is like a pencil that draws right on the computer screen. Since I went outside the area that I wanted to color here, I can also erase, but you'll notice that it's coloring only on the color layer and not on the background layer. And you can actually barely see over here until it previews that those are the two dots that I've added here. I can also go in and erase 
by clicking on the brush tool and clicking on the eraser. Notice how big that eraser is. I can either click and drag this down to the left, which will give me a smaller brush, but there's what's called a keyboard shortcut also. The keyboard shortcut is the left bracket, which is next to the letter P on the keyboard. Hit the left bracket, the brush will get smaller. And if I hit the right bracket, the brush will get larger. This works for both the eraser tool and for the paintbrush. The other keyboard shortcut, if I want to switch without having to go all the way over here to click the brush and then go back and forth to click the eraser, I can tap the letter B on my keyboard to get the brush and the letter E on my keyboard to get the eraser. So I can very quickly go back and forth between the brush and the eraser and using the bracket tool, the black bracket keyboard key to increase and decrease the size of the brush. This way I can very quickly go in between brushing and deleting. And again, it's all on this one layer. So I'm just very carefully going in and adding color, which is darkening up this color on the color layer in this application. One other tool you can use is the paint bucket tool. The paint bucket tool is here. And the nice thing about this application is it remembers the layers. So rather than painting the entire layer, if I want to click in here in each one of these areas, I can paint just those areas with the paint bucket tool. Notice, however, it's not completely painting the whole area. So I still have to go back in with the paintbrush tool and overlap those areas. <clears throat> so I'm going to pinch this back open, or excuse me, pinch it closed to get it smaller. You can see how it's coming together. That time when I pinched, I only pinched with one finger, and so I got a mark over here. If you hold the control key down and tap the letter Z, it's going to undo that last error. So while I'm working on this, and when I'm finished with it, I want to save it with the layers. So I'm going to go to File. Over here where it says Save, to the right of it, the format, I want it to be PSD. If I don't change it to PSD, it's going to do what's called a flattening, which means it's going to make all of those layers flatten into one image, and I want to keep the layers. Notice how it also changed the name here. So I'm going to put my name on it. And since this is the Alpha, alpha Zen handle bit, I'm going to call this AZ hand. And since it's the letter Q, I'm going to add the letter Q to it. This is currently saving in my downloads folder. You can also save it on your desktop. But now I've got a PSD file or a layered file. And I can close this. And the next time I want to go into it, I can go back to Klecky. And upload that file. Nope, let's try import. Let's 
So I imported it and notice it still has the layers. It currently has the ink layer selected. So I want to select the color layer and then I can just continue to paint on this file. So as you import the file and save it, you can continue to work on it. And again, I'm using the left bracket tool to reduce the size of the brush. Notice how when I painted it, painted that gray color. That's because my color is way down here. I'm going to hit Control Z to eliminate that. One way to get this color here also, rather than trying to figure out what red it was, is to click this eyedropper tool. Click on the color, and you'll notice over here when I click on the color, it's going to change. So that's the exact color that I was painting before, and now I can continue to paint. Notice how the edge is fuzzy, though. That's because when it opened up, it opened up in the blend tool. I want to make sure that I select the pen tool. And you can see right here, it's going to have more of a solid edge to it. So that when I paint, it's going to have a very deliberate, solid edge. Again, I'm zooming in by pinching open. I'm going to tap the letter E to get the eraser. I'm going to use the left bracket tool to make the eraser smaller. And then I'm going to erase around here. Make it a little smaller to fit in that tight space. And then just continue to tighten it up. If I want these to be a different color, I just choose a different color on here. I'm going to make my brush smaller so I can fit in the space in the area. And it looks like it defaults back to the fuzzy as edged brush. So I want to make sure to use this one here so that I can get a solid flat color. And to get into the tight spaces, here's where your keyboard shortcuts are going to come in handy. So notice how I'm going a little bit past where I should be painting into this red area. So I'm going to cl click the eyedropper tool, select the red color, click away from the eyedropper tool, tap the letter B for brush, and then I can very click quickly switch tools and clean up that color. One other keyboard shortcut, if I hold down the space bar, I can move the picture around so that I can continue to color in different areas. Again, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, select the green, go back to the brush tool and paint in here. So you can very quickly go back and forth between the colors, between the brushes, and between the eraser and the brush tool to start colorizing this image. Make sure every time that you are finished working on it each day that you go to the file menu, change this to PSD, and resave your file. One other thing you can do, it's always going to rename it here. When I click on here, this is the previous file that I downloaded. It's going to automatically change it to this name. It should say PSD here. And when I click Save, I want to replace it because this is replacing it with the newer file. 
So until we get to the end of this project, I'm going to keep opening it up and resaving it as a PSD file. And I'll play around with this some more so that you can see what the expectation for the final project is. But basically, we're doing this like a, a coloring book. I don't really like this white area over here. Here's how you crop that out. If I go to the Edit menu, select Crop or Extend. Then I can very carefully come in here and make the picture a little bit smaller left to right and click OK. And here again, when I'm finished working on this, once I've got it saved the way I want it saved, I can go back to File, Save as PSD, Click on this name again, because remember, it's going to keep changing the name down here. So I'm going to save it and replace it. This PSD file is the one that you're ultimately going to turn in as your final.